This screencast is about graphing exponential functions using the transformation rules learned previously. So we're going to look at the exponential function y equals 2 times 3 to the x. This is a growth function, and we know this because our b value is 3, and that is bigger than 1, so it's growth. And our a value is 2. So if we were to graph this function, um, we know it's going to pass through the point 0, a, which is the point 0, 2, and it's a growth function, so it will be getting bigger as we move from left to right. And because it's an exponential function, we know it has an asymptote along the x-axis, meaning our graph will get close to the x-axis but never touch it. So let's consider a transformation to this function. We'll look at the equation y equals 2 times 3 to the x plus 4. Now, if you remember your transformation rules, this should move our graph up 4 along the y-axis, which means our asymptote, which was on the x-axis, is going to move up to y equals 4. And our point, which was at 0, 2, is also going to move up 4. So it will move up 4 and be at 0, 6. And so our function will still be a growth function, and it will grow as we move from left to right, passing through the point 0, 6. Now, if we were to take that same function, y equals 2 times 3 to the x, and instead we were to subtract 4, this is going to move our entire function down 4. So our asymptote would move from 0 down to negative 4, and our point would move from 0, 2 down 4 to 0, negative 2, and our growth function would start near the asymptote, and it would grow passing through the point 0, 2. Now, if we were to change the position of where we're adding our number, and we looked at y equals 2 times 3 to the x plus 4, but now we're adding 4 to the exponent, this is going to move our graph 4 units to the left. So that means that our asymptote is not going to change. It will stay at the x-axis. But our point, our y-intercept that was at 0, 2, has to move 4 units to the left. So now we're going to have the point negative 4, 2, and our function will still be a growth function because b is greater than 1, and we're going to grow passing through the point 0, uh, sorry, through the point negative 4, 2. This will change our y-intercept, and so if we went looking for our y-intercept, we would have, be solving for y equals 2 times 3 to the 0 plus 4, which is 2 times 3 to the 4th. 3 to the 4th is 81, so 2 times 81 would be 162. So our y-intercept is going to be way up at 0, 162. If we were to take our function, y equals 2 times 3 to the x, and we were to subtract 4 from the x, this is going to move our graph 4 to the right. And you should try and graph this function, and your teacher will review it in class tomorrow. So you do this one and see if you can figure out where the asymptote is and the y-intercept and what, where your translated y-intercept would go. Now we have a couple other transformation rules. We can take our function 2 times 3 to the x, and we could stick a negative sign out in front of here. And what this is going to do is it's going to cause our graph to reflect over the x-axis. Okay, So it's not going to change our asymptote. Our graph would be passing through the point 0, 2, and it would look like this. If we're going to reflect it over the x-axis, the point 0, 2 is going to move down here to 0, negative 2, and our graph would look like this. Same shape as our exponential function, but it's just flipped or reflected across the x-axis. Our final transformation rule to review is to take our function, y equals 2 times 3 to the x, 
and we're going to negate the x value. Negating the x value will cause us to reflect over the y axis. So again, our asymptote would stay exactly where it is. We would still be passing through the point 0a, which in this case is 0, 2. And our untransformed graph would look like a growth function, but when I reflect it across the y-axis, it will turn my growth function into what looks like a decay function, and we'll get a graph that looks like this one. Now you should try this one on your own, and we'll put a few of the rules together. So you try graphing y equal times 3 to the x plus 2 minus 1, and see how that one goes. Review the video to review the rules, and good luck.